Welcome back to yet another poke vlog. It's an absolute pleasure to have you guys here as always. Today, we are heading over to none other than the commerce. It's kind of like where I play all the time. And before we get into that, I want to thank you guys for everything you guys have done. The likes on the last video, the views, the comments. I mean, it's, it's been overwhelming. So huge shout out to you guys. And thank you guys for hopefully with this video, we're going to eclipse 9,000 subscribers. So if you're new and haven't subscribed already and want to be lucky subscriber number 9,000, it would mean the world to me. Drop a subscription, drop a like, and help our community continue to grow. Nonetheless, let's get into today's video. It's gonna be a freaking ton of fun. Just before we get into today's video, I have a couple of important announcements to make. First and foremost, I want to thank you guys for eclipsing 9,000 sub subscribers. Can't even speak English, that's how excited I am. And secondly, we've actually decided to host our second ever meetup game and our first ever in Las Vegas at the Sahara property in Las Vegas. Going to be hosting a 1-3, 500 max, no limit hold'em game on October 4th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Going to be co-hosting the event with our lovely friends Richard, Fish Poker, as well as Happy Face Hold'em. Their links are in the description. If you guys have any incentive or want any more reasons to come, I've got a couple for you. You're gonna be doing giveaways, splash pods, as per usual. And especially, more than that, we're gonna be filming for a documentary, and hopefully you can get on the documentary in some capacity, and we'd love to have you. Besides that, the second announcement for today's video is gonna be regarding our Collection 1 merch right here. Gonna be dropping a shirt, a hoodie, as well as some new hats. All these things are going to be more affordable. I took into consideration what happened last time. And unfortunately, I couldn't get any decent pricing on a manufacturer. But this time around, we did, which means everything is significantly more affordable. So if you guys want to head over there, there is a coupon code live right now. The coupon code is on your screen here and down in the description down below if you guys want to check that out. That's live for one week from the posting of this video. And if you folks would follow us on Instagram, it would mean the absolute world to me. That's at close to broke. Help us continue to grow on that platform as well as TikTok at close to broke. Anyways, enjoy the video. That's enough of these shitty plugs. I love you guys. Thank you again. And enjoy what ends up being a freaking awesome episode with a ton of action. Alrighty, folks. Nothing like being back in our favorite casino back here at the Commerce. Early on in the session, we look down at King 10 Offsuit. We go ahead and raise to $75 here. The 5, 10, 20 game is on $20 blind raise from the undergun position OMC on the button decides to make the call as well as the big blind straddler gets out of the way the flop comes 4-4 four, four deuce with two clubs and the action actually checks through the turn comes a 10 of diamonds the big blind leads for $75 I call and the button which is the OMC player decides to ship it all in here for $245 pretty interesting little spot here when it gets back over to that big blind player he tanks for quite a bit of time before deciding to make the call that player is sitting with around eight hundred dollars behind if i'm not mistaken and i'm currently sitting on about a two thousand dollar stack all that being said i want to apply max pressure and not let this gentleman get here for free or for cheap with any of his club draws so I decide to put the max pressure on. I jam all in here to get it heads up against the OMC player. After quite a bit of tanking, the big blind decides to make the fold begrudgingly. Luckily for us, we are now heads up against the OMC. The river comes an absolute blank eight of diamonds. I decide to show my king 10 here. Pretty decently happy in this situation. And we get the old OMC slow roll. Everyone loves a chop pot as they say over in Europe. Our opponent decides to show king 10, and luckily for us, we're going to go ahead and chop this first pot up. Pretty great start to this session, all things considered. Happy with the way I played that hand, getting the big blonde player out of the hand with possibly a better hand, but most likely a drawing hand. Can't complain. If you folks haven't already, make sure to click the subscribe button. We are so close to hitting our goal of 10,000 subscribers. And if you'd be so kind to continue to help our community grow, make sure to click the like button and drop a comment for anything you guys have questions about. Enjoy the rest of the video. All right, folks, this next hand just goes to show how powerful position as well as well-timed aggression really matters when being a successful poker player. 
we look down at ace five offsuit $150 will be the three bet against his initial open of $45 from the cutoff after it gets back over to him he decides that $150 is just the right price to make the call considering I'm in position I'm going to be c betting nearly 100% of these flops especially against a smaller opening size here the flop comes king queen jack three spades the one thing he mentioned to me before the flop came out was that he had a pretty suspicious hand so see betting any amount here i think will suffice i'm looking for the third size pot bet i made a hundred dollars and he pretty quickly makes the fold position and aggression are what can really print you money in any stakes in poker in this next hand the 20 dollars blind raise is still on when we look down at pocket jacks, $75 to go seems like the perfect amount of money. So that's what I go ahead and do. The small blind decides to make the call. And that is the only caller we have as we head to a flop. The flop comes 10, four deuce with two diamonds. The hero C bets $75 and the small blind decides to make the call. Looking for a pretty clean run out here. And it does come that the six of spades comes once again we're in a tricky spot my opponent has about 500 dollars behind and i think that in this spot this makes for a very interesting situation with the spr stack to pot ratio all things being considered i decide to bet 250 dollars again don't want him to feel like he's putting his entire stack in with any one of his big draws but also leaving him the ability to think that he has some type of fold equity after all is said and done, though, he does decide to make the fold, unfortunately, for us. Nice pop for us there, and everything just seems to be heading in the proper direction. I want to play for stacks, not running for 100. Oh. You're running for 500? I thought you said you were here to, to gamble. Yeah, but like no, me, man. why am I lowering my edge against you like that, you know? Yeah, well, give me, give me the fish a chance, you know? <laughs> I'm the fish at the table. Give me a chance. As this next hand is being dealt, as you guys could hear, a lot of table talk is going on with myself and the character to my right hand side, talking about how he wants to get it all in for stacks and whatnot. Anyways, we look down at 4-5 offsuit and we make the call to a $35 initial raise. We're against three other players, four ways, and you would not believe it, the flop comes 2-3-6 two, with two clubs. Pretty decent spot to donk lead, I think, here, considering this board is going to favor my range, and anybody with the top pair might get a little aggressive or overplay their hand. So, I lead for $45, and surprisingly to us, the action player decides to raise it to $200 when it folds to him. I'm not going to be doing anything besides cranking up the Christ of poker. I make it $550. This is a crazy, crazy hand. We have flopped the nuts against a really fun action player, he jams his entire stack around $1,500 and we snap call. Insane, insane events. I go ahead and let him know that I do have the nuts here. The runout comes a four on the turn. There is now a four liner to a straight out there. The river pairs the board. I show my flopped nut straight and it is good. Huge pot coming our way. You got what you asked for, buddy. Wanted to get it in for stacks. And we did. Alrighty, folks, quick mid-session update. A lot has gone on. As you guys can see, we are running pure, honestly. I cannot complain about the way we're running. I am currently into the game for like 2K. As you guys can see, it's like 5, 10, 20. Again, I say this all the time, but at the Commerce, the 20 is, is, is just dead. There's no like straddle. It's blind for whatever reason. So action's good, and as long as it's good, I'm going to stay here. So probably minus even for me to be out here uh talking to you guys but i'm gonna hop back in hopefully we can continue to run good everything has gone pretty decent so far and i uh, can't complain if you guys like the videos make sure to, to like them and comment subscribe appreciate you guys all and uh, let's hop right back into the session after our mid-session update we are feeling focused the cards are coming our way and we look down at pocket threes here cutoff decides to open to 35 dollars we decide to make the call and the small blind Looks down at his hand, and that's not enough money. He makes it $75 to go. Yes, $75. A little on the smaller side. There's no way the cutoff or myself are going to make the fold. So we decide to make the call. I mean, I cannot lie when I say this. Not much to say besides a three in the window, followed by two jacks. We flop a boat. Pretty incredible situation, to say the very least. Flopping a huge hand 
in position against two fairly large stacks. We get a quick bet for $100 when it checks over to the cutoff and the small blind decides to make the call as well after we make the call. The turn comes a six of spades. It checks over to me and now I have a decision. Do I bet here? What do I do in reality? After a little bit of thinking, I think that it's time to continue to put some money in the middle. The flop was very, very dry. I'm perceiving somebody to have some sort of the board by this point. Need to build the pot. I bet $250. The small blind decides to think for a second and jams his entire stack in here. $600 to go and is back on to the cutoff player. Does he actually have a decision here? He decides to tank here for quite some time before ultimately unfortunately folding here there's no way we're going to be folding our hand for 350 more dollars so we make the call the river comes an eight of diamonds we show our full house and unfortunately for our opponent who's actually a fan of the vlog he shows queen jack offsuit unfortunately for him he had a huge huge hand and unfortunate for him we just had the absolute top of our range another huge pot coming our way we are officially on the craziest session we've had to date, I think, we haven't stumbled across any really bad spots. Harping back on something we touched on earlier, position and aggression. Early position decides to limp in here for $10. We look down at 8.6 of diamonds, gonna be bumping up the price of poker to $50 as an isolation. We get three total callers, one of them being the limper, and we are off to a flop. The flop comes queen, 10, nine with two diamonds and a club flopping ourselves a gut shot straight flush draw as well as a flush draw but unfortunately we only have eight high in here when it checks over to me i decide to see bet here 125 dollars want to go a little bit on the larger side of course because we have a pretty decent hand and not only that we do have a ton of equity but at the end of the day it is only eight high so i bet 125 dollars everyone except for the initial limper gets out of the way he decides to make the call and we are off to a turn card the turn comes the nine of hearts when he checks it over to me just going off a little bit of feel here on the flop he felt a little weak to me he seemed a little hesitant to make the call and although this is a board pairing card that usually favors a small bind range not a lot of hands that contain a nine in his holding besides exactly jack nine. So after a little bit of thinking, I decide to bet $275 as the old double barrel. When it gets back over to him, he tanks for a little bit of time here. And unfortunately for him, he decides to make the fold. And another pot is heading our way. Lucky for us, a little bit of aggression, well-timed, works in our favor. There is no stopping this train, so we are moving on here. The blind straddle is on for $20. Early position decides to limp. And we look down at ace, jack, offsuit in the small blind. We're going to go ahead and crank the price of poker up. Make it $85 to go. Folds back over, over to the limper. And he decides to make the call. The flop is an interesting one. It is queen, 10, 8 with two clubs and a heart. We flop a double gutter here. I'm going to be c-betting my entire range mostly on this board texture especially since i have the ace of clubs here i go ahead and c-bet 125 dollars and the opponent thinks about it for a little bit and makes the call the turn comes a five of hearts and i think this is a pretty decent card to double barrel on in hindsight i don't like it having the ace of clubs blocks a ton of his nut flush draws that are going to be calling two barrels here and actually be behind so it's unfortunate that i look back on it and it is one error I think I definitely made in the hand by continuing the c-bet here. But the one thing I was very cautious of was his stack sizing. After a bit of tanking, he actually decided to raise me to $550. It's not a lot more for my raise, but the issue I'm having now is that he only has about $250 behind that bet. I'm not getting the correct implied odds to chase my double gut shot, so I unfortunately have to make a fold. This is one of those weird spots where... Looking back on it, there's a clear error in the hand, and I dislike having the Ace of Clubs actually in my hand. Blocks a ton of his drawing hands out there, and definitely leaves into a lot of hands like two pairs, or pair and a straight draw, something of the sort. And unfortunately, like I said, I can no longer follow through with the hand, and I just make a fold. As the session begins to wind down here, action player raises to $35. Middle position player decides to make the call. The small blind makes the call, and I look down at king six of spades in the big blind. Only 25 more dollars to go. This is a very decent spot to defend with. A hand that can make some pretty interesting flushes. So I'm going to go ahead and make the call. The flop comes king, queen, jack, rainbow. 
ton, ton of draws out there, a ton of made hands already out there. But at the end of the day, we do have top pair. Unfortunately, we have no good kicker, but action checks over to the initial raiser who decides to bet $65. Action folds all the way back to me. And again, I have top pair. There's no way I can just make the, the fold here considering there is a spade out there. We do have some back doors. So I make the call. The turn comes probably the best card in the deck. Another king, the king of hearts now makes it less likely that our opponent has a king. And not only that, maybe a little more likely for our opponent to blast off and rep a big hand here. I check it over to him once again and he decides to bet $75 into the pot. A really, really small sizing. I'm not sure what to take this as, but for now, I don't want to overplay my hand. We can definitely get in trouble against better hands, so I'm just going to make the call. The river comes another great card. It's the queen double pairing the board here and now giving us the top boat. We are only losing to pocket queens here. So after a little bit of thinking, I'm trying to figure out the proper sizing. If my opponent is sticky, and he can be, he is an action player, I think he can make a pretty loose call with just ace high. And if we've been lucky enough to cooler him and he has a queen here, I don't think he's folding to any sizing. After a bit of thinking, I decide to bet $400 here, a little over the size of the pot. And he pretty quickly decides to make the fold. Obviously, he was bluffing there. Didn't have anything good to make the call with. And that will wrap up our session at the Commerce 5-10-20 game. What a ride. What an experience. Man, it literally pays to run this good. So I just want to take the time to thank you guys all for coming through and supporting all these videos I'm putting out. Like I said, without you guys, I mean, poker vlogs don't exist. You know, the Brad Owens, the Andrew Nemes, the Rampage of the World, they, they don't exist. So I want to take the time to thank you guys. I don't know if we said enough, but the viewer, you guys are the most important aspect of this whole poker vlog. The whole content creation, you know, you guys are the, the most important part to all this. Besides me uh, cheesing you guys up here and uh, kissing asses, I do want to say today's session was an absolute blast. It's great when you get into a session with a ton of action. And more importantly than that, it's good when you run as pure as I did. So we were into today's game for $2,000 and out for $56.93. Uh, pretty huge win, just almost, just shy of $3,700 if I'm not mistaken, my math's not awful. And uh, yeah, we played fairly well, pretty ABC poker. It's easy when you make hands. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure, you know, a losing session is here on the horizon. And when it comes, I'll be ready for it. We've been on a pretty decent little uptick as of late. And not only that, I'll never not show you guys a session. Every session I ever play is recorded, documented, and put on YouTube. Anyways, appreciate you guys all from the bottom of my heart. I'll see you guys on the next episode. I'm trying to get at least one or two of these out a week and uh, kind of staggering them so that if you're not watching some of the other very successful vloggers, you're hanging out with myself. So until the next time, again, subscribe, like, and comment if you haven't already. We're about to hit 9K subs, which is an incredible milestone. I thank you guys all for that. And again, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Deuces! Deuces.